Welcome to the Miami Township Trustees meeting of September 18, 2023. I'd like to call this meeting to order and start with the adoption of the minutes of September 6th, our last meeting. So, I second that motion. Any discussion, corrections? I have none. Closed. I have none. Okay. I would think with the absence of who calling the roll. Of the note taker, I think the chair. Yes. I was just making order. sure okay. that Trustee Holliser didn't have any comments on the note. No minutes. No. Hearing no further discussion or no discussion or corrections, may we vote? Uh, yes, we may. Mr. Holliser? Yes. Mr. Reacher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. <laughs> I get myself up here. Okay. Now we have to approve the minutes of our special meeting, um, where we simply did a motion was made. The, the amendment of permanent appropriations in the in the two two eight two two eight one um, fund, and um, you had a chance to read them. I read the minutes, but. It doesn't have a copy of the resolution. Um, I've, that has already been signed and filed. Anyway, I uh, move that we approve the minutes of September 13. And I second. Chris wasn't here, so we will vote. Mr. Hollister? Yes. And Ms. Moyer, yes. Okay. Motion to approve the payment of our bills in the, in, in the amount of $43,540.44. That's general fund 1789.34, fire fund $42,990.09, EMS $3,183.32, cemetery $550.35, road and bridge $7,974.01. I move adoption of this. I second. I, I, I move approval of the payment of the bills. I'll second. I have a quick question. How come the fire fund keeps going up since Colin's gone as opposed to the other way around? Um, I was actually just kind of wondering that because I'm like, I don't feel like I spent very much money. Um, well. Except for this part. That's it. I don't have a good answer to that right now. Well, there was the eleven thousand for for new. Um, oh, is that included in that? Uh, well, I don't. Maybe not. I don't know. We we approved it last week. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it would have had to be paid. So that would have been included in this. No. I mean, it would have had to be paid to be included. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't have been paid yet. No, because okay. we're still looking at eight There's not more than $19 per dollar general in Burger King. Damn. Well, one of the factors is two Whoppers. people. Isn't, it, isn't one of the factors two people on medical leave? Oh, we had a huge amount of overtime. We had, I want to say 7,000 in overtime. And isn't it true that. we pay medical leave, we pay the people who aren't working, we pay mm -hmm. the people who are. Correct. So we yeah. adjust them then. Um, Nate. Or Nate. No, 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 no. Well, no, Nate's, Nate's on light duty, but Justin, Justin would have been 72 hours. I'm sorry, yeah, 72 hours for the last pay period times his hourly rate, and then that would have been roughly equivalent for whoever was covering for him. And so if Nate's period. on light duty, do we have to have someone in addition? Yes, yeah, there's a coverage for Nate also. So that might yeah. be. And Nate will be on light duty for the foreseeable future? Uh, he's waiting to hear from his orthopod um, as to what if he's if they're going to do PT or surgery on him. But the other one is definitely getting surgery. In fact, his surgery is next week, next Thursday. Oh, and this might not be things we're. Yeah, but <clears throat> well, we're not. I'm not saying names, but what? Right. I didn't say names either. Um, Did we, we didn't approve paying these bills. Yeah. Did we? Don't hear we moved and passed. Okay. We moved and passed. All right. Hearing no further discussion, may we vote, Mr. Hollister? Yes. 
Mr. Reacher? Yes. And Ms. Moyer, yes. Okay. On to our correspondence. Um, Deandra, Green County Regional Planning, Perspective 240, is that what it's called? Two, perspective? 2040. 24, 2040, 20. of course, is finally completed after all of its trials and mm -hmm. review, and it's available on the website. May I remind you that's the 20 year plan for um, Green County zoning or um, land use planning, and ideally, our planning aligns with theirs as a resource. You must say, as an unbiased observer, although I did participate, it was a very well done plan. Very well done. It was service well. And the Zini Gazette describes it as focusing on farmland preservation and considered development. Something like that. Sounds good. Cover their bases. <laughs> then the mic and the camera's rolling. I just want to make sure since we don't have much coverage. The bike's green and the uh -huh. camera's red. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> this little paranoid. Mm -hmm. um, Colin Claywell, from the Office of the Governor, said a certificate of appointment of Chris Beecher to the State Ohio Cemetery Dispute Resolution Committee for 2024. Seems like I just had one of those. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. It's, it's a four year term, it's not just 24. So it goes oh. to 28. 24 to 28, okay. Um, I was appointed to fill. Uh, I was appointed to fill a one, oh. like a one year or an eight month term. Okay. Somebody who left. That's why I had to have to do the whole thing over again. Did you have any disputes this year? Yeah, oh. and got like thirty of them coming up. Two or Wednesday and Thursday. Who knew? It's going to be a long two days. Who knew that there were disputes in our cemetery plots, etc. Um, Jelena Lazar requested to be considered for Miami Township BZA as an alternate. I wrote back to her today, inviting her to come to one of our meetings in the near future and um, introducing herself and say what her interest is. Look forward to seeing her. This last BZA we operated with four people because of Jeff being on vacation. So we're eager to get another one. And three people for one of the trials, for one of the hearings because you know, there's a recusal. Um, Ohio Auditor of State, we had an MOA to award, you know, Perry Associates to, as a contractor to do the audits for, um, for our township fiscal stuff for the next four years. Okay, David Graham, pro property tax levy issues costs and proceeds, a nice little interesting little document that we thankfully are not on because we don't have a levy this year. Right. Um, but it, it does bring up thoughts about when our renewal is coming up and when we need to start taking the steps for that. Um, we'll talk about that sometime. Again, Deandra from Green County um, Regional Planning. It's just the executive committee packet for tomorrow. And then we had um, a lot of, we were copied on 15 different um, support, um, support, letters of support for Patron Farms Agritourism. And one against. And one against. Okay. Sure. Department of Development announced some workshops they're having for fundraising and for veterans. Michelle Clements said the GC, the Green County um, Township Association minutes for June and July, and I somehow discovered that we had dropped off the mailing list for that. Did you notice? Yes. <laughs> like for a couple months, yes. and I kept thinking, there's got to be a dinner coming up. And um, finally, I, I happened to meet, run into her at the Miami Valley Regional Planning meeting and said something, and she got us back on. Since we're mentioning, let's just qualify it or clarify that. Green County Township Association has a monthly uh, dinner and program and minute uh, meeting. That's very interesting. Um, Ethan Raby it was announcing the Green County Coordinating and Planning Planning meeting on September 19th for the total eclipse on April 8th, 2004. <laughs> Well, my, my daughter went to the total eclipse, like in Georgia or someplace, 
several years ago, and it was it was pretty crazy. The the traffic and the finding places yeah. and people yeah. renting spaces right. in their yard. <clears throat> yeah, there were there. I'll, I'm going to that meeting, and it's it's already been there's already been a lot of discussion even before the meeting has occurred, and we're not even in we're in a good zone. We're not even in an ideal mm -hmm. zone, um, and they're already saying that Green County, if I remember correctly, is going to be expecting potentially like seven hundred thousand visitors. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no? Yeah, they're they projected this all out. They're scary numbers. I'll find that data and show you. It's, 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 scary yeah. they're, they're scary yeah. numbers, yeah. Yeah, the last one, people were like traffic jams and stopped on highways and things like that, trying to get into the zone. So we're going to be completely dark, aren't we? I mean, we're right on the edge. We're on the edge. But we're yeah. going to be but we're like 90% or 95%. Cool. And then Lori Fox, um, apparently this is National Preparedness Month. The focus this year is on older adults and disasters and hazardous events. I'm prepared. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay. Hurricanes, famine, pestilence. No, 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 no famine. Every famine. <laughs> um, Mark Heiss, okay, public on the agenda. Mark Heiss said that he would be here to, he had some um, concerns about the about zoning specifically about the chamber's um, permission to do the sunflowers, um, but he's not here, so we'll move on. All right, Denny, you got a fire report for us? Okay, keep this brief. Um, just a rough little comment. I, this didn't make it. I was just thinking of this. There's always something to add in the middle of the meeting. Um, I did meet with Ethan from EMA just to to do some uh, uh, initial you know, meet and greet kind of stuff. And then uh, Johnny Burns and I also met kind of to do something a little bit, a little bit similar with that in the last week. So starting to do a little bit of networking in that with, you know, the people that I didn't normally uh, work with that much. Um, just me, Ethan. Ethan Reby, he's the EMA director. For what EMA area? FEMA. Green County. Oh, okay. Yeah. He replaced. Roseanne. 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 Roseanne Anderson. Okay. And he's emergency response in case of disaster, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, more of a comment about mutual aid in that. Um, uh, Marilyn actually commented and said the EMS numbers are, are down. And actually the reason for that is in typical Miami Township fashion where we have a stupid amount of calls back to back the last two weeks have been a lot of calls back to back mm -hmm. where we ended up calling mutual aid for the second call. Um, and some of that, honestly, the ramification of making sure that three are on staff as opposed to if we had four. Mm -hmm. um, not, nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. um, but so if you look at that number, that's, that's really why. And, you know, it's really funny when you look at uh, more agencies, particularly when you look at the agencies, you take if you take out Beaver Creek and Fairborn, other agencies don't see the amount of second calls that that we do. It's always been one of those things that everybody else looks at. They're like, "Why do you do that?" I don't know. It just it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and then just a simple little thing because you know we look at paying 155 bucks a month from Spectrum, so I'm going to move us to streaming. Uh, going with uh, YouTube TV, which will be about half the price of what we pay for Spectrum. We just got to pay for the hardware initially, which is like one, one fifty. Um, so save save us a little bit of money in that. And that's actually that's all I have. That's okay. crazy, but that's it. Sounds good. <clears throat> I have a couple of things, if I could. Please. Um, where's your status on the new scheduling software um we have another in-service um we have another in-service uh this week and once we're done with that we're going to do a user in-service those are done virtually will be recorded so the end user people who won't be able to, to go and participate will just watch a recording uh the expectation is that we go live on the first Mm -hmm. um, that's that's my plan. So we're looking good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then we're going to set up a read-only account 
so if somebody has questions about scheduling who is on staff that kind of stuff there'll be a read only account available it's going to be set up for maryland but then she can look at it and i don't have to run a report she can just go mm -hmm. and look at it so the further you get into implementing it you're still satisfied with what it uh, what it offers yes what it yes. yeah it's good it's good way better than what we're working with and there's initial upfront cost of like 3500 or something and then there's a subscription over here yeah yeah, the subscription is what? what oh shoot, nineteen, yeah. fifteen or nineteen hundred. I forgot which it was. No, no big deal. Um, so yeah, the thing I said to you over the weekend, where the, the employer is supposed to have, you know, the hours and the overtime and the vacation days and the sick days and the hour by hour. Is, is it? Are we saying that we're the hour by who worked which hours? We're all the employers, or we're the employers? Like, like, I don't know what if you we're mean. supposed to have on, if we're supposed to have, according to the DS, DOL, if we're like Colin always had this like Joe Schmo worked 12 hours on Tuesday and from this time to this time and and, and 24 hours on, on Friday from this time to this time. Yeah, we always had it on file, and yes. now now we don't. But it, it, we're supposed to because we're the employers. But you say as long as you have a time clock, we're good. Yeah, because you can still go back and run that time card report, which was yeah. the one that, that's what I sent you the so, other day. So in that case, we're all the employer, not our files. Our files aren't the employer's files. We're kind of, we're all the employer. So all the records are there. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, because it, it, because we can go back and generate that. Now, what I'm going to do when we move, when, when we make this transition off of the old software, I'm going to archive all those reports so that no matter what happens on the outgoing software that we still have those records but I'm just going to make like a digital copy of them and not print them out from the file because it's just frankly too many. Well we, we pretty paper. much have them up until when Cullen left. He, yeah pretty pretty much yeah, but I'd rather just have like an, an actual electronic copy. And so it's good enough that we have them we don't have to have those in our files. It's good enough that they're somewhere in the Yeah, section. that they're in a file, yes. Okay. Yes. Though it would be useful for us to have them so we go at staffing levels. But we will have them with the new software. Yes, Got correct. It. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any uh, further conversations uh, with MedAccount? You had said you had hoped to be able to talk to them about. I spoke to him on the phone Thursday of last week, and he is supposed to call me this week to schedule a meeting. To sit down and do like an interim audit of where we are now just to bring me up to speed on that and we might have some recommendations even after that meeting but he said he'll call me this week to schedule it mm -hmm. now that account is the, there are the folks who bill for ambulance runs mm -hmm. correct i thought i saw an email where they were having some kind of training but, um, okay. yeah they do they do uh there's a I won't say a training a month, but at least a few different trainings a year. They're meant more for for the provider yeah. uh, than than administrative kind of people. They tend to like to have our stuff more face to face when possible. Did you have a question about Medicount, Don? I just want to clarify, oh, okay. but since I, since we're talking about it, I mentioned to Gina that. We get very high rate of compensation from insurance companies for our ambulance runs. That's the legend. Uh, a lot of communities don't have the same insurance level. Mm -hmm. And if someone doesn't have coverage, we bill them once and then forget it. But it seems to have dropped off somewhat this year we don't really have a good explanation for it so there's no that would be part of the topic be some conversation as to mm -hmm. what's going on out there yeah um jeremy making any inroads with transferring old emails no we basically just temporarily put that on hold because we were mostly addressing other ems stuff but it's back on his radar how I've got much is it costing we only have to save it for three years right mm -hmm. how much does it cost us to just let them hold it for their ears. 
How much are we we're paying them to host their website and to? Yeah, it's not broken down. Right. Um, we could certainly ask and see what you got. Do you know what we pay them every month? Uh, Seventy-four dollars. Do you want me to ask him? I can see if he can itemize it out. At least for the time being, I would like to have normal access to the to the old stuff. Oh, you just do. Go to, I do. I know I do now. But I was just saying, if if we make this transition and this that and the other thing, and we lose that, or it gets more complicated, so keep it what, as what, it is for now. What transition? For the to the Microsoft for the Outlook. Okay, we'll get out. Oh, I think you're actually both saying the same thing. Are we? Are we? Saying I think you are. You're saying keep it, keep all the stuff that's archived, keep that with servlet, um, and then at the end of the three years, when we're past our three-year public record part, then we don't worry about it. Uh, yes, if it means that if it came over to Outlook. It would be difficult to retrieve things, to to go back and get something, get an email from David Graham about levies in 2000. I don't, I don't think it would. But if you want to make a clear delineation, I, I think that makes sense as well. I'm confused now. Why, why not just, except for the money? <laughs> I don't know how much money it is. Why not just? Keep it there where we know it, where it is for three years. I don't have a problem with that at all. Because it, like, I can't I, imagine it's more than twenty-five dollars. I mean, it must be twenty fifty dollars to to host. Yeah, I can't imagine it being a website. Yeah, because I, so I've gotten back quite a bit. Yeah, so have I. Yeah, especially yeah. for the David Graham stuff. Yeah, and I kind of like how the familiarity of I, I like I know about one hundred percent of things. I do the same thing with mine. I mean, it's amazing when I go back and I'm like, well, I remember this email from whenever, and I just go search for it and find it, and I'm like, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, actually, for me, I've got, I go back to well past six years, and I still go back and look at some of that stuff. And, and then, technically, after three years, we don't need it anymore. Right. But we, but, but we had that lesson about the, um, the email your wife found from, that uh, from the website, mm -hmm. what do they call that? Oh, DNS stuff, yeah. That save, that, that email she saved us with from 2013. But yeah. That, maybe that's just a freak accident or a freak fluke. Well, you know, data is cheap to keep. Oh, we keep, yeah, we keep It's dirt cheap, you know. It's not, it's it's not it's like in a filing cabinet. I don't know, I must have seen that as I was doing it because I purged thousands of files up to like 2018. Oh. Um, oh, okay, so you had a couple sense. of years ago. But this was 2013, mm -hmm. so. You had a good sense to keep it. I must have said, I'm keep that one. <laughs> it was awesome, good save. Anything else for um, The only thing is, while well, we're gonna mention in a resolution, but I just wanna make sure we all understood that we're certainly going to be bouncing around fifty thousand dollars in overtime paid this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that seems like a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it was around seventy plus last year, though. But we had a lot of things going on last year. Yeah, we've been hit pretty hard the past two years, and just things that we have no control over that have definitely impacted overtime. You know, and it, it, they're just things that we can't predict. But. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, it's, it's crazy. That's the thing. I'm sitting here going, okay, I've got overtime under control, and Somebody it took one down incident. Yeah. yeah, it took one incident to right. throw that all out. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. Cemetery Roads. Dan is not could not be with us tonight, and um, hey, he's either enjoying himself in Las Vegas or recuperating in uh, Houston. One of the two. Houston. Houston. <laughs> she lives in Houston. Las Vegas or Houston? Yep. What, what happens in Houston stays in Houston. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I don't want to come to yell at I don't have anything that I picked up about. You know, Brandon was doing a fine job while he was gone. I went through the roads. They are okay. Um, 
and really no worse than the last meeting. So mainly because we had so dry weather. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's still some needs out there, but. And when Dan is, we're still okay. We don't have to be looking for help for Brandon. Well, we may still. Okay. I mean, this is. I mean, he hasn't even gone under the knife yet. So. Um, the timing may work out for us. We've talked about that. If that, if that event is in October, when's he getting blood work? You, uh, the 6th. The 6th. So the 6th of October is kind of the date where after that, he may be eligible to have the surgery. Mm -hmm. And then you have the surgery, and then you got up to 12 weeks on, on either being off or light duty. But October, November, can be not too bad out on the highway. Yeah. And I mean, the grass isn't going to grow that much. And the, and the snow isn't going to blow. Snow's not too bad. So hopefully we'll get through it. Um, we will get through it, let me put it that way. Well, we also, way the other. I mean, we also should be prepared for, you know, Dan's, you know, prognosis. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't know about that. We don't know that it'll be like in November. We need to put them together. Well, I thought he said he had a somebody lined up as an assistant. Uh, he was for Brandon. Thinking, thinking along those lines. I don't think that's that's terribly far. It, it might be firming up, but I um, do have one of my guys who actually asked and expressed some interest in it, but it hasn't. Uh, I'll. I can. He might not be a bad option that I could yeah. also reference. I mean, it could be good for mowing. And yeah. He can drive a fire truck and a dump truck and that kind of stuff. Still mm -hmm. fun? Nope. I think he would do fine with something like that, actually, with some training. Can you dig a grave? I asked that. He said no. <laughs> well, I'm making a little kit for Brandon and it's got all those vitamin C packets. <laughs> and, a, and a thing of band aids, a tin of Yeah. Band so. Yeah. <laughs> We may be digging graves if something happens to Brandon. We may be. I can use a back up and we fixed the old one so far. That reminds me, I'll tell I get the wrong graves. I have dug graves. I know you have, but you Did don't you want to do it, do you? <laughs> I so, think yeah, so. you, You've had dug the grave before? No, it's not okay. talking. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, we ready for the fiscal officer report? She has two resolutions for us. Did I miss anything? Gina, you're on. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the forecast, <laughs> Gina? Um, well, this first one, resolution 2023-39-38. No, oh, I guess we'll have to go 38 first. Okay. Right. Amendment of permanent appropriation. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. Road fund increased by $2,000 for repair and maintenance. Fire fund increased by $2,000. Does anybody know why the fire fund is increasing by $2,000? That's the fire chief. I mean, yeah. 21, wait, 20, oh, 2025, 599, what is that? I oh, asked her and now I forget. Oh, I couldn't. So. Other. <laughs> that doesn't help. Others. It's the same cut. One is at 134, that mystery is You're looking at revenue, you should look at appropriations. She told me today it had to do with the credit card bill. Okay, good enough for me. That sounds about right. I move. Uh, adoption of resolution 202338 by a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. And Ms. Moyers? Yes. Okay. Now you read those in different order than this one. It's on the paper. Just let me know. Not so. This is 2003. This is 38. Never mind. I don't know what you're talking about. You read Hollister Future Moyer, whereas it's, it, it says Hollister Moyer. Uh -huh. You did Hollister City. Yep. 
I'm just being silly. Well, I want, okay. I want to read myself last, so I didn't have to talk to myself. <laughs> okay. All right. Here is um, resolution 2023-39, authorization to payment of fire and EMS salaries. Um, if you need any background on this, once upon a time, a trustee long before me told her to take 66% of overtime pay, was it overtime pay, from 2281, and she took that to heart and didn't have the money for it in 2281, and we had to have a special meeting, so this is to erase that from years ago. Whereas in the spirit of fiscal management of funds allotted to pay the salaries of fire and EMS employees, the trustees find it appropriate to cease the use of funds from 2281 for this purpose. Therefore, the trustees direct the fiscal officer to pay the aforementioned employees solely from fire fund 2191. I move. I'll second. Any further discussion? Uh -huh. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. yes. All right, that's easy. Uh, while we're on fiscal, do we, do we, um, I have, I've crunched some numbers, but mine were from the last set of financial data. Do you, do you, did you do some crunching from the present one? I didn't put them together. I reviewed them all for excess or not. What, 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 what I crazy? found from, not from this, this part, but a week ago, mm -hmm. I mean, two weeks ago. After, after, after 10 pay periods. I found that the total that we spent on payroll so far this year is um, 653,000. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about the stuff coming on 2281 until last week. And so when I averaged that out over 10 pay periods, that came to 36,331 for pay periods. And we have eight left, so 36331 times 8 is 290,000. We have, at that time, had 179,000 for payroll and 322 overall. So let me do a quick thing. Are you looking at one fund or a combination of them? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at both 2191 and 2281. Keep in mind that 179 comes out of the, you don't add it, and subtract it. I subtracted it, you got one. Okay. So well, what I mean is we have 179 payroll and we have 143 operations mm -hmm. for a total of 322. Okay. So, just payroll loans 290 only 322. I'm just give me tell you where I are. Mm -hmm. It kills me to say we have the ARPA fund sitting there. But above and beyond that, next year we won't have the ARPA fund. However, we won't have Collins position either. So where do we stand? Right about level. <laughs> okay, don't jump off the ship yet. Okay, I won't. There is going to be, based on the trend that I've seen and I haven't put together, but we start, I, in my mind, the fourth quarter, I start looking at, you know, is there a little extra here that might move forward, not what we're going to spend. Within, our same, within the same fund or within well, all the funds? No, not within all the funds, but within the fire and the 2181, the, uh, the EMS. Because that 322 was, every, I think everything left in 2191? Yeah. Everything. So, but even, we also even if we move it, that's all. No, but there are things within. Yeah, I, I, I guess there's a piece I'm missing where fund status isn't really Okay, we're 60, we're 60 plus percent into the year. So that means that in my little pea brain, mm -hmm. in the appropriation status, on all the lines, we should be roughly 66% to this point, mm -hmm. and we're not. Some things are a little over. Uh, compensation boards and commission members, uh, other 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 salaries, which are some other salary people, a little bit over. 
um, Social Security, uh, Medicare, those are a little over. Well, uh, OPNF is a little bit over. Hospitalization is under. So there's a there's a roughly um, eighteen thousand dollars there that we probably could move into salary. So that's not already included in the three twenty two we have left. No. That is not. It's included, but it's not appropriated. We're not going to spend, according to our progression. We're not going to ex expend the whole final appropriated if, but amount. But if we, if we were if we weren't going to ex so let's suppose we weren't going to spend anything else except for payroll. Wouldn't the max we have left is th three hundred twenty-two thousand? If that's our fund balance. The way you get that would be to squeeze some other. I'm not following. I'm sorry. There's stuff left over in some of these things, is what you're saying, that we're not going to spend. But if our fund balance at that time is 322, that's the max, max that we could possibly squeeze out of that orange, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, just asking. So we're at 290, and the max we could squeeze out is 322. But we don't even know Okay. I'm going to think on that. Okay. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in theory, there may be approximately 40 to 50 in the EMS fund that could be transferred uh -huh. over to the cell. But the big picture is what the hell are we going to do next year? Well, and, and one, one other question. When we borrowed 140 from the general fund last year, and then we paid it back this year. Mm -hmm. That was just an extra line or something. Right? That wasn't. If we if we spent six hundred fifty three thousand already this year, that wasn't including the one forty, was it? If you say yes, I love it, but I don't think that's the case. Well, this is an this is a this is an expenditure. The one forty is a revenue. But it was an expenditure. If we didn't spend it, it's not an expenditure. Was it expenditure if we took it from the fire fund and put it in the general fund? Yes. And and then we um, took it the, right. But it didn't come out of it didn't come out of salaries. It came out of other. Okay. So that is the true salaries we spent. I believe All right. so. Okay. And we have one fewer administrator, so there's some. You know. Yep. Yeah. And we have a. Here are the funds, mm -hmm. but it's a one-time gig. Yeah. Okay, so, so I repeat, the big thing is the big what thing happens is, next year. The big thing is when, when, when we appropriate for next year. We may need to squeeze some other lines. Well, or we may, I mean, when does it get to the point where we say, we would love to offer this level of service with two paramedics on every shift, but can we afford it? I mean, what, what, when do we get to that point? I, so I gotta I, say, I think we're there. And I, I don't know where, yeah. So anyway, I'm looking forward to a um, understanding better how we do that temporary appropriation in, in January. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I don't quite understand how the, the, the March. Easy, easy, easy enough. Easy to understand. Yep. I might go to Becca. Yep. Get, what, get all we need is the carryover as of January 1 in every fund, enough money to cover expenses to April 1. What's that all? That's it. <laughs> and we just appropriate them. And, and you're going to get the fire roll, the payroll, fire payroll from Walmart. Well, okay. we well, still have our, our magic bullet, maybe, in, in, the, in a lawyer's office in Cincinnati. Okay. okay. Potentially. I'm very hopeful of that. Okay. There's a yeah, couple of two I'm not sure what you're referring oh. to, but they may don't want to know. Oh, if, if, it, if it comes through, you're going to want to know. If it doesn't, you best, best is, this is well not. <laughs> I'm missing something. It, I'll, I'll explain it to you over a coffee or something. <laughs> uh, we also have about 240000 in the in the general fund, which is going to help 
Uh, and okay, we're good. I, I know we're good. I just think that we need to. We could be better. Yeah. We, we need for the fire budget to be our best approximation of what we're spending instead of the finish line that we blow through. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So no year. more, no more knee injuries. No more. <laughs> yeah. All those no things. more, no more apartment buildings burning down. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, I'm hopeful. That's I think great. we got this. That's We're gonna have a Brandon fiscal officer. We got Brandon fire, fiscally responsible fire chief. <laughs> we got the three fiscally officer, three fiscally responsible trustees. Right. We got this. What could go wrong? We'll figure it out. And we get a slight increase of, of revenue next year, right? Yep, we get a little above. A little above the real estate thing. Okay, cool, let's go. Zoning inspector is not here. Do we, do, we did both of those. Um, anything else for fiscal stuff? Mm, not Zoning inspector, um, it's not here, so. Um, anybody have any questions about the BZA? It's very interesting, but we talked a little bit about it. Did you want to just announce to the general public that we had the hearings and they both I mean, want to tell the results? Yes, we had two, a double header BZA meeting, one for agritourism on the um, Patron Farm on Kyle Road, a packed house, I'd say, um, lots of testimony and um, they prevailed. Well, initially it was, turned, uh, it was turned down and Richard's, well, Richard's determination was overturned. Um, it, very good discussion. It's really good discussion. It was recorded. It was recorded, and it will be on the website. Um, it's already on Channel 5 website. Um, and then the second one was the Sunflower. They went for temporary use because, because it was determined by the zoning inspector that um, Sun... The sale of T-shirts was not um, was did not fall under agritourism. I think that's what Mark was going to talk about tonight. I won't speak for him, but um, and so he suggested to make it happen quick because the sunflowers are growing um, to escort temporary use real quick up on the agenda, and they they were given temporary use. And um, I like our BZA now. Amy Aker did great. Eli. It was a wonderful addition. Good. David Newhart's great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. All right. Standing committee reports. MBRPC. That was an interesting meeting. They talked about all different kinds of traffic things that just made my mind crazy but not as crazy as all the road closings and uh, <laughs> orange barrels. That, and I think there's a correlation. There's a lot going on and there's a lot. And that's what most of the meeting was about. But, um, Did they talk about our paving, our paving of Brandon Road that hasn't happened yet? No. Well. And then Mike Eckbert of the Miami Conservancy District, if I could find his slideshow, they promised we'd get it. He did this great, um, presentation about the changing water cycle in Miami Valley. I'm not my yeah, the Miami Valley. And um, they're in a deep process of identifying upgrades to the dam system, the famous Arthur Morgan Dam System. They, they identified about $160 million um, worth of, it's in great shape, but edifying of it. Um, so his data showed, this was great. Oh, I have it. This is the rainfall since 1945 to present. And they came up with, um, what was it? The rainfall, the average rainfall between 1950 and 1980 was 37 inches. And the average rainfall between 1991 and 2020 was 42 inches. That's 37, average of 37 per year to average of 42 per year. So the, there's definitely a 4.63, the average rainfall has increased by 4.63 inches over the past 40 years. That was interesting. The flow of the Miami River increased 
Uh, but the ground levels are stable, meaning that the more rain's coming down, but it's wildly water rushing down the streams. And some of the evidence of this was that the water table in the ground is stable. Is stable. Okay, I understand. But so it's washing away. Um, they said that the um, Metro Parks reports that they're spending a lot of money taking large trees, clear, clearing large trees from the waterways because they're, you know, as the bank erodes, the big trees are falling in. Um, and another thing, it's, if you know how the five dams work, they, they don't stop water, they just oh, create places where they overflow. Really brilliant. Um, one of the best dam systems, dam, it's one of the best dam one systems. Dam the, best systems. One of the dam best systems in the country. Thank you, Arthur Morgan. Um, but when one of those dams flows over and has to hold water, for, when the field has to hold water for a while, that's called an event. Um, in 1980, there were 200 events in, in that year. That is where water backed up. Where water the backed up in the dam surface. But the the dam. In 2000, there were 250 events. And in 2010, there were 300 events. So there were definitely, you know, melting glaciers have to go somewhere is what I think about it. But, um, and so th there's increased flooding, but it's not because rivers are running over their banks. There's increased flooding of basements and houses and stuff but it's more stormwater systems overrunning, overrun and low-lying urban and suburban areas. That's where the flooding's coming. It's not from bank of river running over their banks, it's um, stormwater systems backing up into people's houses. Um, so the upshot of that is they make a recommendation to local zoning authorities to think more carefully about stream set, setbacks from streams, um, riparian buffers, you know, water retention areas, um, and f de a decrease in impervious surfaces so that the water can be soaked in instead of just shunted. Um, that's it. So that was a very interesting meeting. That and you say that presentation is, was video. No, they have the, the slide. Okay, I'll, I'll, when I find it, uh, I would like to see that. Yeah, it's really interesting. Who else? Green County Regional Planning, Mr. Reacher. Uh, it was could have been the shortest meeting of the century. Uh, Deandra was on vacation, and her assistant did an admirable admirable job on a very short agenda. Uh, there were only two small subdivision reviews, and they went like and split. And off we went to be adjourned. They both passed. Uh, they both passed. They were both in the Oak Creek. Uh, yes, they were both in the Oak Creek. The 81? Yep. Yeah, it's actually the 81. That's the one. Okay. And we will meet uh, tomorrow in the executive committee for some new stuff. I don't know quite yet. What. Clifton Union Cemetery. We have not met. We have. One of our three board members is uh, still homebound from uh, heart surgery. Uh, so I imagine we'll meet after harvest. Uh, Yellow Springs Development Corporation? Yes. What are they uh, nothing real ex well, exciting, maybe, but not brand new. Uh, the we do have a committee uh, doing planning around our uh, community solar planning grant. Uh, remind you, we got about $100,000 for exploring community solar in the township. And that would put us on track for a second, more ambitious planning grant. None of it. Uh, for construction, um, but it might have. It. I hope it meshes with our uh, zoning commission's review of solar and mm -hmm. And we didn't talk last time, Don. Um, speaking of solar, that the Supreme Court overturned 
keyword once and for all. No, we do. It's not over. <coughs> they, it's still on appeal with the with the board itself. Right, with the power signing board. Uh, the the complaint that went to the Supreme Court was about the power signing board's process, mm -hmm. uh, and. I got no explanation as to why the power signing board is in slow motion on the, the appeal. And any possibility that they're going to come back with a, a different plan? We don't, we don't know any of that. No, there wouldn't be a specific plan. I mean, the power signing board could reverse itself. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> All right, and environmental commission, I didn't go because I plumb forgot. That's good. So I'm going to plumb forgot here. Um, Green County Township Association. It was it was posted by the Green County Commission, and I didn't get the invitation. But as I explained earlier, <laughs> we're back on the mailing list. But I'm sorry to miss the um, one that posted by the Green County Commission because I, I I would think that they would have a pretty good dinner. Did I forget anybody? I'm on the Green, the Glen Forest Natural Burial Committee. Did I forget any other group? Um, I don't think so. Well, we were going back over. We're having a meeting. I got up there October. Oh, by the way, Denny put a high tech <laughs> scheduler. Isn't that nice, Don? We were thinking of you when we implemented that. I'm, I'm uh, very <laughs> pleased, and I've, I've uh, already. Uh, used a digital, uh, that is a, by digital I mean my fingers, <laughs> oh, digital. device, and I it's entered our digital on the schedule right. Right. Yeah. meeting next it's week. It's so simple. <laughs> There's no Who would have thought? <laughs> um, so yeah, I put that, we have our meeting coming out in October. Chris knows we removed a lot of locusts. We still have that back section to do. Um, Jerome Borcher heroically removed poison hemlock. He dressed up like an astronaut in trash bags and took out the poison hemlock. Um, and we, we checked out, we had asked Dan and Brandon to do a less, to use, um, let, let's scrape, uh, scrape a smaller part when they buried someone and also use um, plywood so that it can be, so that it can be moved back on and, and leave the, the roots. And we have observed much improved grow back, less disruption to the prairie with our modified site preparation. I was hoping to thank Dan for that tonight. Um, from the site preparation and minimal scraping. Um, they ID'd, ID'd a new type of invasive, which was, I didn't think it was new, it was mare's tail. You heard of mare's tail? No. Um, but Teresa and Jerome removed a lot of that this yesterday morning. Um, receded some areas. Um, they wanted me to report that we had their, our successful table at Earth Day. Um, the mowing paths are better, they're growing in better because Dan was bringing them in and making those points grow better. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I reported our water feature plans. I'm just, just a warning, you know, that our little space we have for the water feature. Mm -hmm. I told them their idea to put it here. Mm -hmm. They wondered why it wouldn't be symmetrical, but I told them they'd have to arm wrestle you for that one, that I'm not getting in between that. Yeah, that's not that's there, right? No, it hasn't been wrestled. Okay. <laughs> um, I told me your idea that you'd like to see this come. And it may be too small. I, I was just out there about an hour ago, and it may be, you know, the point, as it were, okay. you know, may be too small. And I mean, it's, it's not something that we couldn't form, you know, out, you know, make it a, a bigger, but. Um, but you're not that big on that, right? Not that big on that, but whatever. Okay, cool. Um, just update. I called. I called the woman, Kathy. Uh huh. 
And she said, yeah, I'll get on, you get on, I'll get on. And so I called Marvin again today and got his voicemail again, but we're going to badger him. <laughs> or, no, I, I used a good approach, like we, we loved your work, we'd love it if you came up here. So this is to put in a water fixture at the Natural Barrier. Natural Barrier. Mm -hmm. Actually, I met with the electrician before the meeting oh. out there, and uh, he's going to start work on providing electricity to the yeah. to the area. And I'd love to show you a picture, Don, of this nice little water fixture. It was, it was out there. Well, it's being, I printed oh, yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't need exact numbers, but what what has been the rate of, have we seen an uptick in spots purchased in, in all of the cemeteries, not just natural areas? I haven't been tracking it, and generally I don't track it until the first of the year. I do it on a yearly basis mm -hmm. as opposed to month to month or that sort of thing. I so I'm sorry, I don't have that. My casual observation said that the people are liking the idea of the oak grove. I think there have been more oak, oak grove plots purchased than natural burial. And that's fine with us. Mm -hmm. uh, by natural burial, I mean prairie. Because over the uh, Labor Day weekend, I went to a couple uh, really old timer, uh, the Bryan High School reunion, and that's because my uh, a couple siblings in town who were of that vintage, and people talked about the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering if there were people, old timers who no longer live here, whether they're actually buying plots or just talking about it. You know, we had talked and about potential of two full-size burials in a natural and a prairie burial site in the in the ten by twenty, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I was under understanding we tabled it, and you thought perhaps we had agreed to it. Could we either bring it up or formalize it or think about it some more or whatever we want to do? Yeah, and. The committee's talked about that. They have no problem with that. I just wonder, um, okay, somebody already has a plot. <laughs> they could be buried with their loved one there. But what about the people who, who they bought two plots? I can't help it. Okay, I just, that's fine with me. <laughs> that's fine with me. I don't know what you can say. I'll be none the wiser. I'm not going to dig a hole and put five hundred dollars down in there. Say, "Here's your rebate." <laughs> Sorry. What and do you think about that idea? When people can sell plots back, can't they? Not once they're in them. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> no, the idea of allowing now two barrels in one of the 10 by 20 plots in the natural burial ground. I, I, I'm comfortable with that, but if, if a couple wanted to sell, a, they had bought two plots so they could both be buried next to each other, mm -hmm. and then they said, oh, I could be, we can share one plot, then they ought to be able to sell that. Oh, absolutely, they can. Oh, yeah. I was just saying, if there was somebody in there, that would be problematic. But, but I don't, uh, there's there's a there's a but to everything. I would like to advocate to uh, adopt the policy of this is only for families. This has to be blood relatives. It's, you can't just sell this second spot to well, Joe. Blood. Married people aren't blood relatives. Well, all right. <laughs> most, <Yeah>. most. <laughs> we hope. <know. laughs> What do you mean, sell a second plot? You can't just, Don, if you own a, a natural burial plot, you can't say, hey, I'll, I'll, let, I'll share a plot with you for $750. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't. I don't want to get into that. Okay, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we could, we could. Nobody's going to do that, Chris. I, I know, but I, I'd like to have it okay. be, the, be the policy. Just to be family. Yes. Do we need to have We don't have to do that with houses. Houses aren't going to be there for an eternity. Okay. 
All right. Do we have to? We just agreed. Okay. In general, we think, we being the committee, think that that the Oak Grove is underpriced. I see. Which part of it? The individual ones that are going for seven fifty. Mm -hmm. When the the prairie is going for fifteen hundred, but but the Oak Grove ones are half the size of the prairie ones. <laughs> Okay, we better not talk about it. They're, they're five by ten. It's location, location, location. <laughs> they're, they're five by ten, which is which are the same. Yeah, I, but it's not about stuff. square footage. Like, for example, like at Kateri, the one down by the pond is, what, $30,000? And it's the same size. Okay. And, and, and generally, the idea of, and this is a sore point, the idea of a, um, how most cemeteries have a, um, what do they call those things? those funds that last forever. And down. And down, yeah. Mm -hmm. That may, maybe we would be wise to have an endowment, but I don't want to talk about that tonight. I'll wait till I have thought it through and have a good explanation. But if, if we were going to build an endowment. We could start now. The 750, <laughs> the increase in price at the the Oak Grove would help fund that. But don't think about that tonight, Chris. It's a beautiful evening. It is. Um, update on BZA coordinator process. We're almost ready to go on this. I know we already, I think we're ready to go on this. I, just, I don't know if Richard is, but I don't know if he will ever be. <laughs> so have we agreed on uh, the description? Of the job? Yeah. I have it. I have it. Well, to me, that that's perfectly fine. The procedures, everything, the step-by-step -step procedures is what I have for for a BZA. That that seems to me that I've seen that memo, and it's been updated. So, to me, beyond that. What is the description? Well, do we do we need to formally endorse it or approve it? Or? I don't know. I would think so. Okay. Why well, not next meeting we? All right. And Richard will be there. He may have. He had um. He had questioned a couple of things. He questioned um. If, if I well, have the right. If we're discussing it next time, we can talk about that. I'd like to give you a heads up. He discussed, he discussed whether I had the right to make these applications. I checked with our attorney. She said, of course you do. Um, yeah, that's it. And then he questioned something else. I do have a question. He, I, think, I think there's a, a split, too. He, he believes that temporary use should go straight to the BZA. And he thought it might be a permit. I don't know. So there's that little split. And then I would love to have an agritourism permit, but I don't know if that, that would be his. I don't know if he'd go along with it or not. But I, I suppose if we said we want an agritourism permit, here are the things you need to, here is what we want the map to look like, here are the questions you must answer, I think it would save a lot of trouble. Because it became clear at the BZA, one, of, one part that I didn't tell you about the BZA hearing, one part of the testimony of the Patrons was the process and the difficulty they had with the process and the lack of clear expectations and stuff. So, um, the, um, Jen thought it'd be great to have a clear set of questions and a, and a map. Also for temporary use, that's the other thing Richard had thought, we can't, we can't do a permit for the temporary use because it's not spelled out in, in the code. And she said it doesn't have to be Given that they're still working on it, there should be a complete set of questions you ask every person for temporary use. So I went and made it. She gave she gave me an outline, and I used her outline to make yeah. it, to make it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I think everything's on track. If we could bring bring everyone along, and honestly, watching um, the zoning inspector have to handle all these details, I, I would think that I, I'm hoping that it'll be a relief for him. All the phone calls, all the mail, all the cancellations and the 
other medicine. So I'm hoping that he can get past. I look forward the to change. a good discussion about this at our next meeting. Okay, I, I hope he can get past the idea of change and the idea of hey, my my job just got a lot easier. I am using just my vast experience and intelligent brain to make decisions and not spending it sending out 100 emails and making copies of testimony and distributing, so. And trying to get ads in the paper at the right time. Right, that too. I think we're Yeah, over. yeah he's taking care of a lot of details. That, 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 that it, he started off with a simple job, and as it got more and more complicated, he just did it. And we thank him for that, because he didn't complain at all, and he just started adding more and more to his job description and now we'd like to make two clear two clear positions. Okay. Okay. And now I would like to entertain a motion. Oh we're not adjourning yet. Um, we're gonna have an executive session. We're not going to take any action in that executive se session. So um, you don't have to stay. And um, give a reason we're having it. We're having an executive session for the purpose of employee comp to discuss employee compensation. Okay. And entertain a motion to re return to regular session. No, you don't move. You just you we just are back in session. We're just back in session. I'd like to call this meeting back to order. Okay. And entertain a motion. At 625. At 625. And I'd like to entertain a motion to maintain our personnel policy of no buyback of vacation at the end of the year and that only 200 hours can be carried forward. I make that motion. I'll second. Uh, may we vote? Hollister? Yes. Mutcher? Yes. Moyer? Yes. I make a motion that we adjourn so moved. Er, second. Aye. Aye. Aye.